Okay. Are we live? Yes, we are. Today, we're going to talk about the shift to the money mindset. Well, you need to make it for your business to be successful. One of the things that I consistently see all over the internet, dripping all over the place, are weak mindsets. Very weak mindsets. But before we get into that, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu. Speaking of Hustlers Kung Fu, below this stream, there are payment plans for the more expensive courses to make them accessible to you. Just go below this video, you'll see them, and the, the payments range from 50 bucks to 99 bucks per month, up to 17 months. So this is a way that you can get into the mix, get into this money mindset, and begin your upward climb to a better life. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. You having the money to live where you want to live, having the money to drive what you want to drive, <coughs> having the money for your kids to go to private school, this is what you want. You want to live that American dream. And HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com will help you. So go below the video and pick out your courses. So one of the things that we want to talk about is what is the money mindset? Now, I'm about to get into some tricky waters here. If you didn't know, I am black. And that's where I stopped. I didn't move to African American. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people call you. What matters is, do these people respect you? Respect is a better currency than being liked. Well, one of the things that happens with people who look like me is they don't feel, a.k.a. Kevin Samuels, that they belong in the room. They don't feel that they can do something. They don't feel that they can start a business. <clears throat> they don't feel that white people, Asian people, Hispanic people would buy from them if they started a business. So they're steeped in this extremely limited scarcity mindset. And I know what I talk about because I've talked about t topics on here. And instead of hearing of a black man winning, I have men, mostly men, not women, who want to argue like Glenn and Cameron. Yeah, you got money, but you still a black man in America. That money ain't going to insulate you from you. That money ain't going to stop a racist cop from shooting you. That money. I'm 52 years old, soon to be 53. Last time I got stopped by police, I got a warning. Success and money matters. And it is a big thing to begin to think and act differently. Because once again, I, I have uh, put out certain things and that just many people do not agree with me because they've not lived my life. They don't know the benefits. And every time I put up something that is positive, where I'm winning, I will get a certain number of black folks who will go like, well, Glenn and Cameron, he ain't really do nothing. You got lucky. Well, you weren't the black man of the day. You didn't get chosen. And for two decades, I've been getting away with this stuff. For two decades. But for some reason, many people feel it is luck versus talent. Now, I want you guys to hold on to your, your, your booties. 
the power of your subconscious mind. Get that book today. Begin making changes in your life today. Once you begin to understand this, and this is a lesson that comes from the power of your subconscious mind, Earl Nightingale's Lead to Feel, what you think about is what you become. And I want you to really examine your thought process. There was this thing with people coming here on YouTube, starting talk, trash talking, and I would go to their channel page and I would see it, world star, world star, world star, or they would be subscribed to a bunch of gaming channels. And you could tell a lot about a person based upon their extracurricular activities. And I was just like, no wonder this person can't stand me. You know, it, it is sad that so many people have opted out of personal success because it's uncomfortable. The money mindset is thinking, what can I do to be of service to my fellow man? That's the origination point. When you begin to think of service, what can I do for my fellow man? What product? What service? What can I do to help people come up? What can I do to help people have a better life? What can I do to solve problems? When you start thinking like that, your mentality evolves. Oh, Ebony White, thank you. Appreciate that. So I, I, I will urge you to get that book because once you begin to understand how your subconscious mind works, you will begin to look back and see all of the dirty, janky, incongruent, negative thought processes that you have. Because, you know, when I was in that boarding house, I was a smart dude, but I had a lot of negative thought processes. I didn't think highly of myself. I didn't think highly of my opportunities. And I was in a situation where I was living crazy, and it started with my thought process. That's where it all starts. And every now and then, I would have something where I would slip out of my old thought process into a new thought process and get different results. But habits die hard. Habits are a big problem. Habits create a legacy. So if you want to change, create new habits. So when I begin to think like a hero, as I like to call it, when I begin to think of, I can start a business, I can sell to people, and this is something that I did when I was selling that office furniture. I rid myself of the pookie nim mindset. <coughs> the majority of my clients were white. And I would tell myself every morning, they're going to buy from you, dude. They're going to buy from you. I would pump myself up. I'm driving to sales calls. I got Earl Nightingale. I got a Brian Tracy playing. I would never listen to music. When I was on the on this clock, if the stuff that wasn't feeding me, it had to be feeding me good stuff. It had to be feeding me mission stuff. It had to be feeding me stuff that was on point. King Nick, 1234, thanks for the super chat. Would it make sense from an asset protection standpoint to have multiple operating companies or a single holding company 
LLC or a holding company per operating company? For first of all, it depends on are you married? Two, it depends on what you're doing. It depends upon the risk exposure of your businesses. Like I have a holding company structure for this business here, but I'm getting into real estate and I'm going to have a holding company, but I'm also going to have a living trust for that business. So I'm going to have the holding company, the operating companies, which will hold the properties, then the living trust between me and the operating company. So it really depends on what you're doing, how much risk your business has, and so on and so forth. You know, because uh, I get a lot of questions like this, and I can't really give you the, a good answer because I don't know what you're trying to do. Because let's say, like, let's say you start a trucking business. I would have that trucking business under a separate holding company away from my other companies. I would not have a holding company that owns a trucking company that owns other stuff because trucking is high risk. And if, you know, depending upon how your stuff is set up, you could have an accident in one of those trucks and it can vibrate through your whole company structure because what, the, what an attorney is going to do, they're going to start digging. They're going to see if you have any money. And when they're like, whoa, this guy has enterprises. This guy has a lot of companies. Dig, dig, dig. So, you know, it really depends. All tech, software, engineer based, different products, no wife. You could probably get away with one holding company. Unless you're going to get into real estate. Real estate will force you to create more companies. So, and this is something that I'm probably going to start doing is the LLC consulting thing because <coughs> one of the big problems is when y'all ask these questions, you know, I don't have enough information. Work horse fitness and training. Started an LLC for a new online sales company, but never did anything. No. 1K in franchise tax. I don't understand that. Why do you owe money on a company that's never made any money? I don't understand that. I need more information. Because the mentality, like, let, let, let's take the LLC structure, which is intimidating for a lot of people. And I just dived into it. I learned a lot about it. I told myself I can do this stuff because before each sales appointment, I used to give myself a little pep talk. You're going to get the deal. You're going to get the deal. And this is something that derived from the power of the subconscious mind, which is I understood that what negative thoughts did. So I had a lot of clearing up to do, repositioning. So I would pump myself up and I would feed my subconscious mind a bunch of positive inputs. And it worked. I remember Siegel and Company. I went in there, did my sales presentation. And the lady was like, looks good. We're going to go for it. Signed off. Week later, sent a deposit check from corporate headquarters. That was like... Yeah, this stuff works. It works. So you got to work. It's Texas, and I don't understand it either. Did the state of Texas send you something saying you had to pay franchise tax? Gwen Jackson, no, it's not risky to start an LLC with your name on it. Yeah, I don't understand that. I, I don't understand Texas LLC stuff. Because the way that it should go, if you start an LLC and you don't make any money, you shouldn't be paying any taxes. You will still have to pay the annual registration, but you didn't make no money. I mean, 
That, that, that's, that's just madness. That's craziness. But you need to make the shift to the money mindset. I had someone the other day, it's like, hey, I've been listening to you. I've been working on my business. It's just not growing. And typically, that's going to be a result of not knowing how to sell, not knowing how to market, and having the wrong mindset. Because there are many people out here who create LLCs, they have businesses, they're like, I'm a boss, and they don't have no boss energy. They just, it's just there. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Texas. I don't, I don't, a thousand dollar franchise tax. I don't understand that. Let me look that up. Because that's bugging me. Texas franchise tax rates. Texas Corps, PCs, LLCs pay 1% of gross receipts over $1 million. It's uh, pretty much saying, yeah, if you didn't do anything, <clears throat> it seems that you had to make some money to be paying this franchise tax. Yeah, you would have to uh, seek out some special guidance. It's a little confusing. All right, so here's Erica. You, she's in Texas. You would fill out a zero income made and pay no franchise tax. Because that was the thing. Like, taxes are generated from profits. No profits. No taxes. <coughs> All right. So, all right, there's Erica. She's in Texas. Because, like, you know, once again, I'm like, taxes are generated from profits. This is how the game is played. So I don't know, you know, you, you may have to look at that. And why are you starting an LLC and not doing anything with it, man? What's up with that? So the money mindset is looking for opportunities. Like today, I've been sitting around because, you know, I got a lot of people who want to do consulting. But, you know, I'm like 1500 bucks for three consults. And I'm not coming off of that. And, you know, people want it to be cheaper. But I don't really want to just be talking about a lot of newbie stuff all day long, which is what would happen if I was like, hey, you know, 150, 250, 350 an hour. I'd be talking about that kind of stuff with a bunch of people who don't have nothing going on. And that's just not exciting to me. Uh, one of my best things was, when I was consulting real hard and had a $50,000 a month client who had so much going on. It was very exciting. You got sidetracked. So the money mindset is you, you got to be looking at things that are, you're going to make money. And you got to clear your mind of what your mama said, what your daddy said, what the old lady on the corner said. You, you can't listen to people because once you decide to become an entrepreneur, 
and you file your LLC paperwork, you get busy making phone calls, you get busy, you know, out there, you have separated yourself from the sweaty masses of humanity because you have become a person who has taken action. So you have all of these people, you know, you could be in a room with a hundred other people and there'd be nobody in that room like you. You could be in a room with a thousand people and there'd be no one like you. So you're getting all this feedback from society, but you have become a different kind of animal. And it, it, it creates disharmony to listen to those messages. Like I have some people in there in the chat room talking about, I would do better with a Roth IRA. Uh, actually, I would not. I've calculated it. And see, this is where the purveyance of poor people finance, like a Roth, a traditional, not even a SEP will really work for me. Well, a SEP could possibly work. But I've just made the decision that I'm going to form a real estate business because the passive income tax is cheaper. So just go ahead and give me a bunch of properties. Go ahead and give me some renters and just run it like a business. Don't worry about, because see, what's the thing that, you know, you got to take taxes into account with everything you do. But one of the things that when you decide to form a business and you like, I'm not listening to this person. Because, like, I was just sitting there like, look, dude, I've already calculated the Roth. Because you can only put so much money into a Roth or traditional IRA. All right. And I even heard someone say you could grow a self-directed IRA to millions of dollars. And that's not true because you can only put so much into it. There's only so much that can go into it. And these limits are things that I refuse to put on myself because it's like, all right, for me, because what happens is people start to conform to these limits. Like, I don't have a job, so there ain't going to be no company match. You know, let's say you could put away 5000 then your company matches you 10% of your salary. You make 60000 so that's $11,000 a year that goes to tax deferred. For an average person, I mean, I make $11,000 before the week is out. So that ain't really going to set my world on fire. That's not going to change things for me. So once again, I had to take off the normal person hat and go like, okay, what am I going to do for myself that's going to continue to make money for a long time? Real estate. Buy real estate. Get passive income. Get renters. Do that. So, you know, and also solve problems before they happen. You know, being a landlord can be stressful. So once I get to the fifth property, I'm going to form a property management company, hire someone. And, you know, once again, it's different. <clears throat> Failure is mostly viewed through other people's eyes. Stop viewing yourself through other people. That's what I'm saying, man. You can't listen to these people. They're sheep. Bah, bah, bah. They're cows. Moo, moo, moo. This cow is over here doing the same thing that that cow over there is doing. You can't listen to them. You have got to own your mindset. Because, you know, like, I, I see comments all the time by people, because this is one of the things that I do. When I look at some stuff, I, like, there's a guy, he's like, hey, uh, I have six rentals, two are paid off, I've got Section 8. I don't want to mess with Section 8. Don't want to mess with it. Why? Let's look at my exposure. I live in a neighborhood where people are paying rents of <clears throat> three to $25,000 per month. There ain't no Section 8 round here. So my exposure to that market has influenced 
it informed my opinions. <clears throat> so yeah, I go ahead and get some renters in and they may leave because I, I know one thing people like about Section 8 is they don't really move that much. So you get you some Section 8 renters, they stay in the house five, six, seven years, you get that government check. That's your, that's your party. That's your Kool-Aid. Drink it. I just don't want any parts of it. Wow, just check the IRA limit and it stops you putting money in at 120K. This is what I'm saying. The limits of an IRA are too low for me. I would rather go ahead, form this real estate corporation, get up to 30 houses, have like, you know, 900K coming in, pay the taxes on that. After it's all said and done, have about $70,000 a month free and clear to do what I want. Plus, still keep, you know, this business going. Yeah, so once again, you know, because when people are saying this, they're thinking from an employee mindset. I have not been an employee. I have actually been self-employed longer than I've been an employee, which informs my process, which informs my mindset, which informs my decisions. <clears throat> Because once again, if you want to get wealthy in America, you can't keep playing poor people games. You know, getting an RA and being limited. What if I wanted to put away like 50 percent of my income? And this is what people who are doing the fire movement have come to understand that they can only put so much in the RA and then they have to go into the markets and put it in there on a none uh pre-tax basis <clears throat> so once again <clears throat> exposure and awareness dictates new thought processes so like you know and this may sound elitist but when I see stuff in the comments like hey I got six houses and stuff all right, cool. Congratulations. And you still talking about an RA that tells me that you're not informed in the financial game. You've done well. You got yourself some real estates. Congratulations. But you ain't playing the money game to the best of your ability because you still because the thing is, why don't you have 20 houses? Why don't you only have six? Why don't you have 30? See, this is what I ask myself, because. Typically, people like to come in and kind of flex in the comments. And, you know, I get that because I talk a lot of junk and people want to try to level up. But, you know, I may get me six houses next year. You know, once I really get deep in this real estate. Because once again, you got to you got to get the money mindset, which is no limits you can't go into it with a limit on yourself like, well, uh, you know, I just want to make a little money. I just want to do this over here. That, that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you get to that long money. That's not going to help you get to doing what you need to do. So you got to shift to the money mindset. And the big shift is saying that I'm unlimited. I have unlimited power. I have unlimited resources. I have unlimited options. And act and walk like that is true. And your life will start to change. Um, this may sound disingenuous, but people don't have the proper financial education in America because there's no reason for people to be living in squalor. There's no reason for people to be homeless. You know, a lot of homeless people have mental problems, so that, that could be something else. But in America, there are so many ways to get money. You just got to pick one. And what happens is you'll see somebody who doesn't have a financial education. 
most of America doesn't have a financial education. Once you get a financial education, they ain't no holding you back. I mean, you know, you know, 60, 70, 80 K a year, that'd be chump change for you. You be able to make that in your sleep. All right, William Johnson. What business would you recommend starting for someone to make a lifestyle transition? I don't know. I don't know you. See, th this is the thing. I can't make these recommendations because I don't have enough data. I started my LLC for resale consignment shop. My current goals are to secure a small storefront. Don't do that. What you want to do is get your business that you can sell stuff on the internet from a warehouse. Do not do a storefront. It's really hard sledding. And if you're like me, just sitting around waiting for customers to show up, that's just, it, it, it used to kill me. Because I remember I, I had to sit in the shop like my partner got sick. And I was in that shop all week. And it was just like, When the, what, where the customers at? When they coming in? And then someone comes in and, hello, Mr. Customer. And I'll be like, you know, sometimes it'd be an hour or two before someone else walked through that door. That was just depressing. Do not open up a storefront. Find yourself a way to move products online. And if you still got that itch to start a storefront, then do that. The Bayless Code. Do you buy houses already fixed up or fixed up, fixed up? or uh, fixed up uppers. Well, you know, I, I'm really considering that because this is what I do when I look at property. I'll see what they're selling it for and I'll go to the county taxes and see if they just bought it and if they're trying to flip it. And there's this one house that they're trying to sell for 235, they only paid 89,000 for it. And I'm like, I don't see thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of work done into it. So they got it for eighty nine. They put maybe twenty into it, and I'm like, they're trying to make a hundred k profit. So I'm still undecided on that because I'm trying to make my money go as far as possible. But see, there, there's two things. It's like once you get something that someone can move in, you can start making money, and then to fix it up, you got to deal with contractors. And typically it's two months. So I'm undecided what I'm going to do. Every day I wake up, I look at properties. It would be my first thought to buy something that is rent ready because I want to do Airbnb. And I'm running into problems with these condominiums because they're like, we don't allow rentals. We don't allow rentals. So that's a problem. All right, Tyra. Changed my mindset. Engineer life skills, facts on the warehouse, Uncle G. I build a 3,000 square warehouse for 80K, sales are 100% in and base space. Don't even have a sign. I'm telling you from experience, this is the way to go. Because when we had our operation, we had two storefronts. But when I went and looked at where the money was coming from, the money was coming from Craigslist, it's coming from eBay, it's coming from our website. You know, people just walking in like, hey, I want to buy. That really didn't make a lot of sense. So actually shut down the storefronts and profits tripled because running a storefront is very time consuming. You got to be there. You got to open up. You got to have insurance. You know, you got to go get your business license. You have to get these inspections. And it, it just once was free of that. The money just started pouring in, man. Money just start pouring in. You want a warehouse and you want to ship it online. Because one of the things I realized, and this was when eBay, like, you know, to send international stuff, people were like willing to pay whatever because they were just grateful that you would ship international. I mean, it, it was just crazy back then. And like, you know, for me to you, as someone who had a storefront, I would not recommend a storefront in 2019 and beyond. Just, no, let that fantasy go. Because the big change happened in like early 2000. 
And I saw this change. I mean, we had the we had the storefront. It just wasn't making the money. You see, Max Chewing sold out his new candy from a warehouse in one hour. Use a warehouse and have staff. Eric, Wood. I'm telling you, don't open up a storefront. And also, the rent in the warehouse is cheaper than retail storefront space. Like, way cheaper. Like, five times cheaper. So, because we had two warehouses, and both the rent on both of those warehouses was less than the rent on those storefronts. Edward Fenwick, I wouldn't do that. Would not do it. Uh, right now, everyone has a smartphone in their pocket. And unless, you know, we're going to do, you know, because I just have no interest in that kind of stuff now. Back then, I was just like, I want to make some money. I was hungry. I was just throwing stuff out there. Picture with your pooch. Let's get active. Let's go to the Wolf camera. Let's get the camera. Let's get the ad in the AJC. You know, I was just operating on hustle. I would not do that business. Yep, Freddie. Do not do don't don't get a storefront. Don't do it. One of the things is, and this is the money mindset. When I think of a business or I think of a product, like let's take consulting. If I were to do consults for two fifty, I could probably be on the phone four to five hours a day. So that would be thousand bucks a day thirty one thousand dollars per month and I won't do it because it's inefficient because it keeps me in the loop because I have to do the consulting this is why I push the online courses because the courses are done I went ahead create the course put it there sell it I mean 30 days to 2500 that course is five years old it's still making money today. So when you start thinking of the money mindset, you start thinking of systems, processes, and you try to extract yourself out of the business. Because, like, you know, I may start doing something like, hey, I got an hour, who wants it, sign up. You know, I, I may do that. But the consulting model isn't efficient for me because I have to deliver the product. And as a one person, I can only deliver so much product. With my websites and my courses, if like some, like say I got on TV, and I blew up and then people start researching me and like a million people hit my website. It can handle that traffic. I couldn't handle that. I would be instantly overwhelmed. So when you're thinking of money mindset, you got to think about scalability and also you got to think about lifestyle. You got to think about building yourself up, creating a business where you're working on the business and not in the business. I mean, Max Chewing. Those Texas boys, Christian uh, Guzman, they got something special going on in Texas. They making it do what it do. So, you know, just, you know, I've been telling people this, even from the storage auction days, don't do a storefront. I've had consulting clients. I had to talk out of Getting, you know, doing the storefront. I had to talk him out of it. Yeah, Edward, I would not do that at all. Because essentially, looks like people who want to, like, let's say you want to become a photographer. You can make 100K a year as a photographer, but most of your weekends are going to be taken up. You know, and also it's a balance of, starting this business and creating this lifestyle. And this is why I say never start a business that just for the money 
because you could end up hating it. Theory, if you can hit a 1 million views on a few videos, it's a lock. That will grow your channel. You get one video that gets a million views in a week, that will change the trajectory of your channel. Texas is the truth. Glad I moved here. Big money here. There's always been big money in Texas. That oil and gas money from Texas to Baton Rouge, it's real out there, man. You know, uh, during the recession, Texas really didn't suffer a recession. <clears throat> Money Boy Films, what's up? Just, yeah, I'm just out here sharing the mindset that you have to have if you want to be successful in business. Because you have many people who will go out and file the LLC paperwork. They'll go ahead and go out and get some business credit. But they still think the same. And the thought process, because everyone here, the current thought process that you have is responsible for everything you have in your life. So you go out and get an LLC, you go out and get some business credit, but you're still thinking the same. Your business is not going to do as well as it could. It's just not. Texas is where that very little government interaction. Edward, I see my girl's listening. She has an interest in photography. I'm like, I'm saying, I'm not saying don't do it. If she is very interested in photography, do it. I'm saying don't start a business because, oh, this kind of business makes so much money, and then you end up hating it. Don't do that because one that, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. There is no way I could have been doing this YouTube thing, creating these courses and stuff for 10 years if I hated it, you know, this is part of, you know, I will tell you what happened. I actually started to hate the resale business. I began to hate the people. I thought the people were petty. I thought the people were like, because, you know, I used to get folks like leaving these comments on my channel. Oh, I'm going to listen to your free information, Glenn and Cameron, but I ain't going to buy none of your products. Thank you. And I'm just like, what kind of idiots? I mean, this is the kind of stuff that was consistently happening in the resale space. And I was like, you know what? Deuces, I'm out. I gave my Facebook group to Morris. I let everybody know that I wasn't doing any resale more stuff anymore. <clears throat> I was moving to business. And that's, I left. I took my ball and went home. Because those people were so petty. I was just like, good Lord. You know, if I had someone, if I had someone to do for me what I'm doing for y'all, I would have been a multimillionaire in the storage auction business. We never had a million dollar year in the storage auction business. We had extremely high margins. I mean, the margins were sick. But if I had someone to give me a guide that I put out for people, oh my God, that would have saved me so many mistakes and struggles and but, you know, people didn't see, you know, some people saw it. Some people saw it and were like, man, I, I appreciate this. This is solid. Uh, but you know, a lot of folks didn't. A lot of folks were caught up in the wow factor. Many people wanted to have these home run storage units. And I was honest, I was like, out of about 1,500 units bought, there was only like 44 that were really remarkable. The ooh wheel units the crazy money units, that wasn't even 1% of 1,500. You know, and people were just uh, going crazy. Right, uh, Warren Buffett said it never ceases to amaze him how he can show people how to do what he does to make money, and they will have absolutely no interest in it. People don't like it, they won't do it. That is gospel. You know, like I, I can say I've had, you know, it's like, hey, broke dick Danny, you don't have no money, go over here and do this. And if people don't like it, they won't do it. 
Money Boy Films. That's exactly where I'm at. Growing in the beginning stages of my business. Never stop learning. You, you can never stop learning, man. I still learn to this day. Like right now, I'm watching a bunch of real estate videos, and it's just so fascinating. Subject to wholesaling. And I may start a wholesaling business because... I really wonder how wholesaling would do in this neighborhood. And I don't know. I may, I may just try it. I may go ahead and put me up some bandit signs and see what happens. Rod, for real estate, many people don't realize what you're doing for them. Erica's doing it too, thanks to both of you. Uh, man, I, I, I'm telling you, people, see, there's some, like Rod, for real estate, like you and other people, are thankful and encouraging and enjoy the information and I appreciate you. I'm sure Erica appreciates you. Then there's this other group of folks who's like sucking their teeth. Oh, look at, look at Erica. Every time I see her, she in a different city. She on planes. Who does she think she is? She just a, she ain't no betting me. And once that starts happening, the low-key hate going to start. It, it, it always starts like that because people don't understand that I wasn't born in this position. Erica wasn't born in this position. Through hard work, self-education, trial and error, we got here. And, you know, many of y'all appreciate that. So a lot of people don't understand the process. I didn't get here overnight. It took me, I mean, you know, uh, someone left this a uh, very encouraging post on one of the group pages. It's like, man, I never thought of a million dollars a month. You know why I think that in three years I can get this business to a million dollars a month? There are people doing it. There's this chick. She got one course. She does $1.5 million a month from this one course, and she's been doing it for a few years. She used Facebook ads. She's got all her stuff keyed up. She's got a nice website. That's it. And I'm like, and one of the things is when I see something like that, my phrase is, don't be a hater, be a relater. How is she doing this? Like, let me show you all something. I just found this girl the other day. Uh, there was uh, someone that posted something in the group where she was. Uh, OK. I don't know why it's taking so long for it to show up. Let me come out of this. All right, you know, this girl and I, I you know, she's made $1.2 million in the last few years. Now, one of the reasons I believe her is she looks and she acts like money. This chick lives in a, a three-level house by her damn self. It's a luxury house. I mean, there's just so many little clues that she's dropped that she's making this money. And when you get to her website, let's see. Let's, I mean, She's got a room full of people. And with her, her like, I, I'm wondering what template is she using? This learn how to sell on eBay. She got 1,029 students. This $3,000 course. She's got 190 people in this $3,000 course. She got 190 people 
in this three thousand dollar course. One ninety times three is five hundred and seventy thousand dollars. She got the website. Uh, she's putting it out there. <clears throat> she got a Shopify crash course. But this girl who's like 23 years old in the last two years has made $1.2 million online. And, you know, she got the receipts. She got very interesting videos. She got very interesting content. She's cues a button. And this is where I put my student hat on. And what can I learn from this girl? Because she ain't old enough to have years of experience. I keep learning from these kids. Like, okay, how to do this, how to do that, how to do this. Because I'm not a hater. I don't hate. There ain't no profit in hating. I look, I listen, and I learn. And she's got a very nice setup. You know, she, she's making money. I mean, because when she showed her house in the three levels, and she was living in that mug by herself, that's because, see, this is one of the things. You get all these people online, like, I make money, I make money. But you go to their the Facebook page, they're living in the tent. People who are making money live well. You ain't going to be living like some pauper making $1.2 million. And she doesn't. And this is one of the things that I love about the Internet. There's so much money to be made on the Internet. And this is why you got to open up your mind. There's so much money. It's sick. Usually, uh, Eric, man, if you can see all the negative messages rolling in DM, thank God we can block folks. Oh, uh, I delete folks every day. 89 Dr. Funk, the hater aid is real. Thank you, Mark Scott. Uh, Eric Williams is Jim, sharp sister there. Better work, work, better work ethic than done, mo done most of these men out here. Damn, I just did the math too. This is what I'm saying. She, she's making money, man. Yeah, and she does other stuff. She's very good with Facebook marketing. She has a Shopify store. All right, let me get rid of you. Look, man, I know some of these cheap folks from FinCon. I was like, what's the point of the money? You got to live. Uh, she's wealthy college kid. You can Google that. Wealthy college kid. Thank you, Darnell. And see, this is why you have to have an open mindset. Because I may learn something from someone whose internet business is only a few months old. But they're doing something that I'm not doing. They're making money in a way that I'm not making money. And I'm open to this because I am a student of money. This is the money mindset. Like, okay, you know, because I listened to her. She, she, she really has figured out Facebook ads. Uh, she had actually lost her payment account. Just listen to her. She been through it. I mean, Rael, I mean, I enjoy my money. Ross Motive, I worked in the telecommunications industry for 20 years. 
and just found a 24-year-old woman who started her own wireless company worth five million. Tw <laughs> you see that all day long. All right, Rods for real estate. I'm heading out to Dallas to go there because meet up in October. Spending money to learn. This is what you got to do, man. Because, you know, when the folks were on my channel talking about, I'm going to be here for your free information, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy any of your products. You know how insulting that was? And there was this whole little, cause this little uh, group of haters who used to be on me every day. And, you know, at the time I didn't want to admit it, but it was racism. Because the biggest, the baddest resale dude on YouTube was a black man. And they didn't like it. And, you know, they, they, they would come for me. They would have hangouts about me. And, oh, when they found the mug shot, they went ahead and put all kinds of stuff up there. And then that's when I started suing people. Because they were putting out misleading information. And I sent someone a lawsuit. And he flipped, he flipped out. And he's like, man, my wife talking about she's going to divorce me. I'm like, dude, you done messed with the wrong person. You need to stop doing what you're doing. Eighty nine Dr. Funk is real out here. William Johnson. I paid thousands for a lifetime membership in some online future trading signal rooms. <coughs> After three years, some of these rooms just closed. So much for lifetime membership. Now I'm hesitant with purchases. You know, like when that that market Stock trading futures, that's very different. Raul, well, another sharp sister on the tube is Krista Tyrus, who's an enrolled agent who has courses too. There, there's so many people out here that have information to help you get ahead. You know, and th this is the thing. Like right now, I went ahead and put the courses on payments to help people start taking action. Because if you can't afford 50 bucks a month, you can't afford $99 a month. You ain't listening to this channel. There's information on this channel. You have no money. You can go ahead and start a business, a service business, and start making money out of nothing. On Facebook years back told me I'll never support your business because he didn't like me talking points, which was bros needs to stop blaming Whitey for their failures. Rael, that, that's a sensitive topic right there because once you, as Keter Comer said, once you start cutting the excuses and getting to the real and looking in the mirror and taking accountability, you're going to be really grateful or you're going to be really sad. And a lot of people are going to be really sad because racism in 2019 ain't going to stop nobody from getting what they want to get. It ain't. So, yeah, there's racism. No, Glennon. But, you know, these white people, they don't like black people. So, I don't care if my neighbors like me. As long as they respect me, I'm good. I don't really care. This whole need to be like well, you're being unkind to black folks. Telling them the truth. Telling them to grow up. Telling them that you can start a business and win. You can start a business and separate your family from the average stuff that happens to poor people. Notice I said poor people, poor Hispanics, poor white people, poor Asians. All poor demographic folks are harassed by the police because that's typically where the criminals are. That's where it is. Eighty nine Dr. Funk I just came back this weekend from North Carolina from a boot camp and all I can say guys is invest in yourself and go to events and network. That was the best weekend of my life, <clears throat> networking. Yeah, man, you know, I don't care if they like me, they just respect me. 
And, you know, I, I go ahead and I tell my stories of like having this racist woman at business environments and she sends me her resume. I mean, that really messed me up because I, I called my boy Mario and I was like, yo, dude. And he was like, what? And at that point, I begin to understand that this, this beautiful brown skin is not a limitation. It's an asset. When you lean on the history and the legacy of your ancestors and you like, I don't care, Mr. White Man, you ain't going to stop me. I'm getting my bread. I'm getting my money. I'm gonna make it do what it, I'm gonna make it do what it do. You just just saw this Asian guy live stream being arrested. Guess who? He's poor. All poor people, and this is why I keep preaching: get yourself some money. If you have kids, you need to get yourself some money so you can move to a decent neighborhood. Because where you choose to live, you choose your kids' friends. So if you're living in the hood because it's cheap, your kid's going to have all these hood-ass friends. You pick that for them because of your economic lack of success. These kids out here, man, these kids out here doing wild and crazy stuff. You want your kids networking with Pookie Nim? Or do you want your kids networking with Biff and Sheila? Biff and Sheila like, hey, we're going to the Hamptons. You want to come? Pookie and them, hey, I'm going to the corner store. You got five cents? You, you got to make that move to separate, to elevate your family. Like if you're going to be a man, you're going to be married, don't live in the hood. Get yourself some money. And a lot of people, you know, they, they, they tell me stuff that I know is not true. Having money will insulate you from a lot of racism. And this is something that poor black folks like to say. It ain't true. I don't care how much money you get. You're going to still be treated just like me. You know, when I go to the bank, all these, yeah, there, there's two banks I bank at. They all know by my name. Hey, Mr. Cameron. Because they see those digits in those accounts. I get respect because I have money. There's this one girl, you know, because uh, I'm funding my uh, uh, capital accounts for the real estate, and she just let it slip. She said, wow, you saved this up this year? I said, a few months. She said, whoa. She was not. Like, people take note of success. People pay attention to success. Too many people focus on themselves and the others being liked is a dumb game to play. I don't even think about it if they like me or not. I don't even think about it. You can be racist if you want to in this environment if you want to, but lack of talent and poor management is a killer in business. There's no profit in racism. Yep, get out the hood. So, I mean, there, there's so many things that you can do to set yourself up for future success. There are so many things that you can do. And, you know, the mindset is the forerunner. The mindset, the, the proper mindset is so critical because if you have the wrong mindset, you won't even try. You're like, well, you know, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to do it. Having the right mindset is so pivotal. And this is why, you know, I get into it with the hoteps. And, you know, there, there's people, like, whenever I do my Rich People of Atlanta videos, I get so many black dudes up in their feelings. Like, this dude's like, you don't want to do no, think about no, no black wealth? I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't live there. I live over here. I'm in my neighborhood. And once again, people just don't want to get it because they want to keep telling themselves these sad, sad stories that, well, the reason I'm not successful 
is because some invisible white man is holding me back. That's BS. You're not trying hard enough. And that's the message that a lot of people don't want to hear. You, you don't, they don't want to hear it. And this, this goes back to having that money mindset. A.G. Gaston became a millionaire when there was some real racism. He built a hotel. He built an insurance company. His businesses came out of the fact that we could not do certain things due to racism. He made millions of dollars off of that. But you got so many people with the wrong mindset that are not looking at what they can do. Like the wealthy, you know, check out the wealthy college kid. This, this girl, she's like 22, 23 years old, made $1.2 million. She's known in the, the circles. She's hanging out with these people. Once this, this is why, you know, I, I'm taking this Facebook course. I got to get back to it. Because once you learn how to manipulate the tools of the Internet, you become so powerful. You become so strong. Like I built my Facebook page up to, because I turned off the ad. Let's see, what, what, I, what is it up to? Let's see, uh, what is this up to? It's up to 14,000 likes. And this page gets very good engagement. And that's just something I learned recently how to do. Because, you know, I was like, I didn't understand Facebook. And then I was like, okay, these people, everybody that seems to be running ads and winning has you know, 10 to 20,000 Facebook likes. Hmm. So there, there's so many things you got to do. I saw research showing that slaves buying their freedom and going into slavery and becoming so successful, they put white slaveholders out of business. Man. Limited beliefs is what holds the majority of the nation back. As they say in the internet streets, facts. You got a lot of people out here who could be more than, but, you know, it, it's hard to change your belief patterns. It's hard to become powerful and it, it's hard to become mentally re, re strong, but it's so worth it. Because once you do it, the dividends are so awesome. They're so amazing. All right. I will check you guys out later. Remember, if you want some of the more expensive Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skill products, there's current payment plans under each video to help you out. It's going to be 50 bucks a month because uh, the, the basic financial management course, I've got that for 50 bucks a month. And everything else, I believe, is 99. Fit in there, man. Go ahead and get this knowledge and start applying it and start making your life better and start playing the game. If you don't play the game, there's no way you can win. So with that, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. I'll see you guys.